Messaging apps. There's a high chance that you've seen or used one of these apps that are on screen right now and that you use them probably daily. Some of them remain popular to this date while others have withered away. But why and how did these apps end up on the messaging app graveyard? For me personally, I've really wondered what happened to Skype and Microsoft Messenger because those two I used to use daily. It's been quite a while since I've even heard anything about them. So Pretty much the birth father of messaging apps would be ICQ. A kind of a clever name for I seek you. This was developed by the Israeli company Mizarabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabal
just to be frank, just offered better user experiences. So, it seems logical that they just faded out a bit. But they're still existent, but I fear that they might end up with the same fate as Microsoft Messenger. Uh, is it okay if I take over again? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. There you go. <coughs> Alright, thanks. On to the next one. The next one we're talking about is Viber. It was released in 2010. When I was younger, this app just seemed to be a ripoff of Skype, and to be fair, it kind of exactly is that. It seems to be a bit more user-friendly, but it focuses on ease of use, so I guess because of that there are a bit less features than Skype has, but sometimes that's a welcome change in my opinion. This app seems to have most of its popularity in parts of Europe and Asia and the Middle East. And much like Skype, it was designed to interconnect people from around the globe and make talking to your colleagues, family and friends across the globe more easy. And all of that at a low cost. They tried to undercut Skype and I guess that worked for a while. Viber is still up and running to this date and is available much like Skype on smartphones, desktop computers and you name it. Now the next one that we're going to be talking about is Snapchat. Well Snapchat is actually one that's a bit weird and it's quite interesting in my opinion. I'm not much, so much of a youngster anymore but this app is as the zoomers might say bussin or perhaps lit. Uh... <laughs> No? Okay. This is one of the apps that has seen the most innovation in my opinion. Snapchat messages, known as snaps, added some kind of weird element of privacy and spontaneity in the fact that the messages would disappear after each message that you've sent, or at least after you've exited the conversation. It would just be completely cleared. Additionally to that, it was one of the first apps that actually introduced AR filters. So that meaning, you know, this dog filter that everyone used at some point that you would just get very fucking irritated with because fucking everyone did that shit. I guess it really got a bit out of hand eventually because now every single app that you see nowadays, Instagram, TikTok, they all use these different AR filters and Snapchat is the one that pioneered this. Snapchat is just a weird one. Uh, it's not only a messaging app, the app has evolved beyond that. It's now included various entertainment and content sharing features, making it a platform that has become so popular for creative expression and communication among its user base. Initially, I remember Snapchat going down in popularity after its release because of the fact that it seemed a bit unsafe and the content monitoring was not that great. There were quite some lewd things happening on that app that I'm not going to be disclosing because I don't want to be you know, demonetized. But honestly, because of all the features that they've introduced over the past years, it's really had a resurrection. And I gotta say, I commend them. Now, the next one we're gonna be talking about is Google Hangouts. The next app that we're gonna be talking about is Kick. Kick was released in 2010 and was characterized by the way you could keep anonymity and privacy in check. There was no need to attach your phone number to an account that you could use on Kick, so this would allow you to create multiple different accounts and really stay anonymous that way. Now, keep this in mind because Kick was particularly popular with younger users. But it faced challenges related to safety concerns such as grooming, online predation, limited content moderation and the misuse of bots that were available on the platform. Combine this with the fact that it was just, you know, a younger user base and you have a recipe for disaster. As a result of this, Kick was officially shut down in 2019. Hey guys! It's editing peeps here. Turns out that Kick is actually still up and running. That uh, was a big mistake by me. In 2019, they got picked up by a different company called Media Labs. And it uh, turns out that the main use for the app right now is uh, chatting with sex bots. And uh, still grooming, apparently. So, yeah. So, this kind of concludes the nostalgia exploration of what happened to all these different messaging apps out there. Well, now you kind of know. I guess they all just died out a bit, which is kind of logical if you think about it. Because, you know, when something new comes around, the other thing will die out. Because of the fact that, you know, one will be more in innovative, one will bring something new to the table. And if you don't change and you don't change your strategy and you just stay the same, you will just die out, man. It's kind of the same as when you look at a person. You know, say I were to never change and I were never to overcome and adapt then I would just die out as well. I would not be important, right? 
Well, I guess I'm not important anyway, but that's a whole other story. Let me know if I missed anything or if you have some tips for me. Maybe subscribe, watch some of my other content. That'd be appreciated. Yeah.